Okay, we're back. We're live. We're here on Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. It's a Thursday morning, and Alan Roshima joins us. A uh, very important person. He was the CEO of Hawaiian Electric until just a few weeks ago. Um, but uh, David Ige, the governor, recently announced that he was appointed, that, that Alan was appointed Hawaiian Electric's, or rather, he was appointed to lead a statewide COVID-19 recovery initiative. And he made a proclamation to give Alan a role in, in that office to head the Hawaii Economic and Community Recovery and Resiliency Plan uh, to lead a collaborative effort with government, business, nonprofits all around the community to develop a plan for Hawaii to recover economically. Welcome to the show, Alan. So nice to have you here. Yeah, thank, thanks, Jay. Um, one, one footnote to that is uh, recovery, recovery economically, but also recovery on a social basis. Right. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, and before we get into, you know, exactly what that means, I just want to ask you, uh, you know, we're, we're, in a, we're in a kind of funny place because I think that uh, the president uh, started talking about recovery um, before they had any kind of mutual agreement among uh, the White House and the various medical advisors as to, uh, as to the steps necessary uh, to f flatten the curve and uh, and prevent a, a second wave of, of infection. Um, okay. So there's really two steps involved. What are your thoughts about that? Oh, I, I, I mean, if you, I happened to, during the process, tune on to um, Governor Cuomo's uh, press briefings that really dealt with uh, the actual crisis and the medical um, issues and the statistics and data and um, shortages. So I, I totally agree with his approach, and I think most people do, um, to be guided by science and reality. And um, the public health part is uh, critical to any reopening. You cannot reopen on a hope and a prayer. Uh, you know, that's just the reality. And it's not just for, in Hawaii, it's not just for people coming to Hawaii, but it's for people who live here and have to deal with the day-to-day -day issues. Um, and public health is, uh, is so important, right? We know that. And so it's, it affects as, as employers bring employees back from their homes into the workplace, those employees have to feel safe that, that public health has their backs and social distancing or whatever the new norms are gonna be in the workplace are gonna be effective. When we shop, same thing. When we go to a restaurant, same thing, right? Um, so the new norm, the new normal, until we reach an actual uh, stability um, and a and a vaccination, is going to be different from what we were experiencing before. Yeah, really. There's two parts of the timeline, and I guess the part now, the most challenging part, is to is to do recovery, but at the same time, you know, protect people from infection and reinfection. So it's um, it's a graduated system, and it's a system that assumes uh, that we don't really have a vaccine yet. We have no therapeutics that are dramatically going to cure you. Um, so you have to work both at the same time. Uh, how do you how do you see the you know the the progression on that, Alan? Well, I, you know, I, I, it's it's really changing day by day, and you have to watch the data, and you have to watch um, what General Hara is doing and Bruce Anderson are doing, all in the um, COVID nineteen task force under Haima uh, and the Department of Health. We have private parties uh, as well under the Hawaii Business Roundtable, Hawaii Executive Conference, uh, private uh, insurers are all stepping in to, and the st Senate and House task forces are all adding to the conversation. So there's um, a new task force, not new, but leadership has been uh, convened to come up with a plan uh, that includes all sectors as to what we need to consider in Hawaii because Hawaii is unique. We have geographic isolation. So th those are some benefits, but there's also some economic issues with that. But I think we can chart our own course um, with great public health input and then a, and a plan to reopen in steps. And that's all underway right now. 
Very interesting. And, and I'm so glad they, they selected you because it seems to me that you need to have somebody local to appreciate the, the special Hawaii culture. Hawaii has a special culture about health. I mean, it goes back into the monarchy in the 19th century. Uh, we, we lost a lot of people to uh, epidemics back in the 19th century uh, that, you know, uh, that immigrants, uh, Howleys mostly, who came from uh, New England and the U.S. Uh, brought to these islands, and we developed a very strong, you know, emphasis on public health. Uh, so there's a culture here, and so I think, um, you know, we have to have somebody who is familiar with that culture. We have to have somebody who is familiar with the business environment and the and who knows the people. And uh, as a CEO of uh, Hawaiian Electric, uh, you you know, Hawaiian Electric is a company that covers the whole community. It reaches out into you know the whole the whole um, economic experience of Hawaii. So you know the people, you know you know the economic experience. It's really, in my opinion, a, 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 a perfect selection and a perfect time um, because now you know you, you've, uh, you've you've graduated from the CEO job, um, and uh, this will be a tremendous contribution to the state. Uh, given your understanding and your knowledge. So, wow, I'm so excited about your appointment. But let me, well, let me. Um, I, always want, I always want to bring you back, though, that um, the appointment was not only on the economic sector, right? The economy cannot survive without, without the nonprofits, yes. without the cultural aspect, without the community input. Um, and this gives us an opportunity to come together and it um and bring all voices to the table as we chart our course we first have to stabilize right uh, the stabilizing part may not allow us to have all those voices all at once because you have to make some quick decisions um but we're still trying and then as you get into the recovery and then the resiliency part those voices will become even more important as we chart our new course for hawaii can you can you define those three parts? I and mean, that was written up in the newspaper. Three parts: stabilization, uh, recovery, resiliency. Uh, yeah. And uh, I guess stabilization is the first one, and that includes the allocation of of the Coronas Aid Re Re Relief and Economic Security Act cares. There was an article in today's paper about how, how the money, at least in one area, had dried up already. Um, but that's still you know a, a working a working. Um, a something working uh, in the federal yeah. government maybe there'd be more money and we'll have the, the same kind of allocation issues anyway can you describe um the progression from stabilization to recovery to resiliency sure you know and, and frankly i think the cares uh, act and our and our congressional delegation the role they played in all of that and are still playing is an important part and i want to highlight something that i got reported in the news but it was happening real time with few weekends ago, April 3rd, I think was the deadline for some of these applications. The payroll protection program under the SBA, uh, first come first served, you have to apply through your banks um, and to get relief. As long as you uh, retained employees for a period of two months, it, it's, it's forgiven. So that's that. those are very helpful to small businesses right now, but it also keeps people off of the unemployment roles and it stabilizes our economy but also stabilizes families and you know hawaii has the highest reliance on small businesses i think of any state so to pr protect those small businesses at least as a temporary measure that was an important uh, program our banks all jumped into it and really hawaii got a really good participation and i think when it's all said and done i think it was reported 1.6 billion it's coming to small businesses now, um, and it's going to grow uh, because we're in the queue. And I have to commend our, all of our banks and financial institutions for uh, reaching out to their uh, small business clients and others to get that money. Now, nonprofits have had another opportunity. The funds are drying up. Um, but again, Congress is still working on it. There's going to be another CARES package uh, in the works. So we have to kind of carefully watch where all the money is going to be coming from and for how long. That how long part is imperative because once those funds uh, are used, but the economy is not at full blast, what then, right? Yeah, we're so, on our own. Right. So we have in the state 863 or I'll round it to 900 
million dollars in a CARES relief money that has to be used by 1231. There's presently no ability to use it to fund budget shortfalls. And as you can see, what government is facing, especially in Hawaii, where we're so dependent on tourism, a huge hit to our budget, right? We don't have a manufacturing or a farming community. So we, uh, if those monies could somehow help the community, but also help fund government, then we would also keep more people in the economy uh, productive and off unemployment. So we're waiting for the next iterations of what might be coming out of Congress so that we can do informed decisions on how to best use uh, that money. I also have to say there's various other tranches of money that are coming directly into parts of our society, right? The airports are getting, I think, 130 million. DOE is getting big sum, UH, um, nutrition packages, SNAP benefits have been enhanced. Um, so we're having to model all of those funds and uh, to which uses they've been used or, or required to be used so that we don't use the CARES relief funds to overlap on those, right? So right. we're engaging people at budget and finance and other uh, areas of government also on the outside uh, to connect up so that we know where the money is and how, how do we best use the relief funds. Okay, so, um, okay, I, I think you've been talking about stabilization. Can you talk about re recovery as a, as, as a separate um, uh, mission and resiliency? Right, so recovery, uh, you know, and that, that involves kind of the next stage of reopening, right? So as you reopen, what are the needs? So um, clearly what, what, what this lockdown has emphasized things that we've been talking about for a while, teleworking, teleworking, tele education, you need robust broadband, you need it beyond the digital divide, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That is gonna become very important in the recovery phase. Um, fortunately, we have telemedicine in place where you know doctor's visits can be done um, like we're talking to each other right now. But there's gonna be more infrastructure needed probably for all of that to keep us safe, but to keep everything going. Um, recovery will also include, besides those aspects, um, what other kinds of new economic boosters might come in. So as we look at reopening, and as General Hara and his team looks at what are the safeguards for reopening the airport, for example, um, what kind of money is needed for testing, diagnostics, uh, contact tracing, laboratory abilities within the state so that we have fast results and what are the different ways that we can do this to assure the public that if something happens there's there's a way to address it and that's all part of the recovery it's going to go on for for months you know until they're they're not predicting a vaccine for what 18 months so we're going to be in recovery phase for a while mm -hmm. and resiliency I, I assume resiliency is to make us better prepared in the future for a similar uh, epidemic or pandemic, because this will happen again, even after um, a vaccine is developed, no? Correct. I mean, we, we, we're tied. So this is where our, our geographic isolation may become a benefit. Um, can we become the safest place on earth if we have the right public health structure uh, and we have the right policies, and we have a very, very engaged population to protect health. Can we become that? Could that be our brand? But what is the carrying capacity for our tourism industry versus our culture and community? These are important questions that we have to address. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm sure there are compromises that can be reached, but I think all voices need to be at the table to come up with what does a resilient Hawaii look like? So this is a job that's going to span a number of months, maybe way longer than 18 months. Um, and it's going to cover, in my observation of it, it's going to cover really everything. It's going to be, you know, our economy won't be the same. Our social structure won't be the same when we're done with this crisis. And so this is a, 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 a sort of a, a transition, a transformation of the state. Um, it's building, essentially, I, I hate to say it this way, but it's building a new state 
And it, I guess it, from one point of view, uh, it's, it's enviable that you should be in this position. From another point of view, it's a huge job, a huge burden. It's everything that we know and do, isn't it? Yeah, I, the, the good thing, and the reason I said yes to the governor when he asked, well, one, it is a crisis. And, you know, Jay, you and I, I mean, if you're in, if you're in a crisis and somebody asks you to help, you say yes. Um, on the other hand, uh, as I move into it and understanding all of the stakeholders that have to be engaged and um, all of the policies that will that will be, this is disruption. This is disruption in a huge way, right? And what we experienced at Hawaiian Electric with um, renewable energy, with solar, with whatever, that was disruptive. Every company, every organization is going through disruption. But this one is the whole state is being disrupted. The whole country, the whole world is being disrupted. So how do you deal with transformation in a, in a disruptive culture? And I always say that what you gotta do is you gotta build trust because otherwise everybody's off on their own. So you gotta bring people together. You have to, but it has to be based on fact, data, 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 transparency uh, and sharing. Mm -hmm. That's gotta, that's gotta rule. Well, you have, and you have factors, uh, variables that are, you know, going to be pulling at you from different sides. I mean, on the one hand, uh, you know, a lot of businesses, they, they're done. They're not going to come back. Um, on the other hand, uh, a lot of businesses, um, you know, are, are, they're, they're brittle and uh, they may not be able to make changes so as to adapt. Uh, on the other hand, you have people, a lot of who have been cooped up in their homes and who are ready to scream already. Uh, I'm thinking of that, that, that painting by Edward Munch called Screams, you know, the one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're, yeah. they're, re they're, they're ready. They can't stand it anymore. Yes. You have the possibility of a recurrence and yeah. you have the possibility of, uh, you know, of uh, strange abnormalities coming out of Washington uh, and the world. You have the possibility yeah. the pandemic will fold back on the U.S. Yeah. So all these yeah. things are, are going to be pulling at you. Um, right. it's, and you, it's not only can you, you know, you have to focus on making the plan from the known variables. You have to focus on making the plan from variables that are going to be changing and undermining whatever you do. It's really a job. Uh, how do you yeah, look I at always that? Go back, I always go back to the, to the chain is only as strong as its weakest link, right? So you can't always, it, as we do this, we have to focus on where the neediest areas and where the, the weaknesses may be. So the conversation about reopening and, and schools feeding uh, as feeding areas, childcare, right? When people are staying home, their normal babysitters no longer have an income because the parents can care. What is the caring capacity for the childcare network? So I know Patch is working on it. There's other organizations, but we need to connect up to see that as you reopen, right, the child care network is ready to reopen safely as well. And what are the rules around that now? Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of this is, is communication, as you say. In order to build trust, you have to communicate. Um, and, I, and I suggest that, um, you know, that's going to be a big part of your job. To talk to people, give them that trust, give them rely, reliability and confidence in the, in the future, um, because that will help to motivate them and get them on board to to build recovery. Um, and so you're going to be you're going to be in the media a lot. I think a lot of people are going to know you, maybe even more people than before. How do you like that? <laughs> so you're going to watch <laughs> me age before you, <laughs> in real time. Um, yeah, well, <laughs> you might even develop white hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or it might start falling out. Yeah, I can't do anything about cutting it right now. So. <laughs> well, you know, Alan, you. Um, it's like, um, you know, I studied economics in, in college. And my, my own, you know, look at this is, uh, gee whiz, you have an economy that is like, like stopped. And so you have to rebuild it almost from scratch. And, yeah. and the question, I'm sure you thought about this. The question is, where do you start? Do you start at restaurants? That doesn't sound right. Um, do you start at big companies, little companies? Do you start at service? Do you start at retail? Or do you have to 
make a list of priorities or right. do you have everybody start at once? I mean, this, these, this, the, 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 the phases, the steps, the priorities are right. daunting. How do you see that now? So for all of that as well, right, Jay? So, um, you know, Spain restarted, they, they opened a few small restaurants and some, I think what we have to do is not to rewrite what others have done. And so for that, uh, you know, we're gonna need help to get the best practices. Um, this is rapidly developing in all parts of the world. Um, so we don't commit errors that we don't have to commit as we, we do this. So that's part of it. Um, I, I think that what this brings, however, is to the forefront is personal responsibility and personal accountability. So I think we've had time to stay at home. Hopefully some of us have done some introspection about what is our role for the greater good and what can we give up for the greater good. So, you know, this whole thing about um, a carbon neutral state. Well, if you look at the lack of rolling stock on our highways and car, uh, fossil fuel burning uh, vehicles, our, our air is cleaner. The, the whole world is clear, cleaner as a result. I, I just follow that. Um, is there a personal responsibility uh, option there as we move forward, right, to, to our state policy? Um, fewer trips to the, uh, you know, markets, shopping, whatever. Our, our world has changed. And so I think we have to take stock of that as we talk about what is our new economy or the reset economy. Everybody's going to be everybody different. has a personal role. Yeah. Well, it's like Thomas Jefferson said, Make yourself useful. And that's an important part of a democracy. And I think Hawaii is good at that. You know, the aloha spirit also means yes. make yourself useful. Yes. Uh, and I, we've got to inculcate, you've got to inculcate that, or at least uh, make it come out uh, and everybody get on board about making themselves useful. We'll have a better recovery if people all participate that way. Jay, you're right. I've had tons of texts, emails, phone calls, offering to volunteer. I mean, really, really great people saying, you know, let me help. I, I just don't have an organization to to organize it. So that was today's call. Um, we need maybe some of the volunteers to be part of the volunteer effort um, and we'll get it done. But it's, it's a virtual organization right now. Denise Isari Matsubara is my deputy, but she's also holding down a full-time job at HHFDC. So we're cobbling together a group that can make this go. Um, and, and I think we've done a really good job in the 10 days or whatever we've had, but we're gonna need a lot more to make it work. You have a budget? Uh, do you have an office? Yeah. Are you there on the fifth floor near the governor? Um, how, how are you gonna organize the day-to-day -day work? Oh, I know, yeah. it's by Zoom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we try to eliminate as many face to face meetings, even with social distancing, right? So there's a lot of Zoom meetings and whatever. I, I have a face to face socially distance with the governor this afternoon. But, um, you know, I, I, I'm so thankful that Hawaiian Electric and HEI have allowed me to remain in place. Um, and because there was no time to reorganize and move and all of that as well as I'm getting my state cell phone today and my state laptop. So I'll have an eGov email address. Um, and then we just stood up our uh, page, our first page, uh, opening page for our uh, Hawaii Economic Recovery, Na uh, recovery Navigator Hawaii gov. And oh, good. It's, it's just a basic uh, page. It's being built, but it has an email uh, capability so people can start reaching inward. When we get fully done, we want to have a dashboard of all sectors, all sector leads, what's going on in each sector as identified needs, opportunities, funding opportunities, connecting them up to state laws or whatever. And then a resource center that all the good work that's going on by nonprofits, by business, whatever, healthcare can be deposited so everybody has access to all of that, as well as some technical things like what is the latest on fast testing? What is the latest on what's happening in California, right? All of those things can be in the resource center. So it's gotta be a pretty high functioning website. And this will yeah. be at the governor's office. 
So, you know, the, it just strikes me that uh, when you make the priorities and figure out, uh, you know, which one comes first and how you allocate your time and resources to, you know, rebuilding retail, rebuilding restaurants, uh, rebuilding service industry, uh, you've, you've got to be talking to everyone. It's like, you, you know, you were saying, it's not just economic and social because the underpinning of economic is social. Uh, we have to have public confidence. We have to have people. People have to feel good about participating. And so, <clears throat> you've got, you've, of course, the website, and of course, um, I suppose, um, hearing hearing people's views. Um, you know, like like Hawaiian Electric has done. Um, you know, you you want to ask them to participate in, in a town hall kind of process where you get their feelings. You get them to invest themselves, be part of the process. Um, but it strikes me that you know you've got two levels. One is you got the mom and pop level, the ordinary citizen level. You want to hear from him, but the other is you got to find leaders among these various sectors. I mean, for example, you can't talk to every single nonprofit, but you want to talk to some, like for example, the Hawaii uh, Alliance of Nonprofit Organizations. We yep. talked to her this week, Lisa Mariyama. Yeah, Lisa, and so right. because she can repeat your message, she can yes. organize people in that community. Yep. So it's, it's yeah. finding a way to reach everyone, isn't it? Right. So almost day one, uh, the you know, phone call was to Norm Baker and Lisa Mariyama to start. And they had already organized uh, many of the nonprofits. So they've come together. They've already provided a paper to us of what how nonprofits see it. Um, but they're going to have to ex extend their reach, right? And then the Chamber of Commerce has, uh, you know, subchapters all over the state and by ethnicity, et cetera. And Sherry Manor McNamara is fully involved as well because that's how we can reach out to some of the neighbor island um, business communities in a more effective way. Um, so we're trying to parse out who are for your with your who are the leaders that can bring people together because we don't have time nor can we with social distancing <laughs> convene a meeting, right? Yeah, we got to bring people in in a different way by sectors and then connect up. Uh, right, us. right, and do that in a transparent way so that people see what's happening. They they see you know this uh, this recovery happening. So right. I, I know this is a hard question, Alan, but let me ask you this: How long is it going to take for us to mm -hmm. a develop a, a meaningful plan, at least a putative plan? I mean, who knows with all these variables changing all the time? Well, you you yeah. might have to change it over and over again, but. Uh, how long will it take to develop a plan and get and get people, you know, uh, participating in the plan? And how long do you think it will take to implement the plan? And where does yeah. that fit against the 18 month, you know, period yeah. for vaccine and, and true comfort with a vaccine? Yeah. yeah. So good. All good questions. I mean, so right now in my 730 call with um, my small team, the emphasis is on making sure that we can help pull together General Hara and his task forces, the House task force, whatever, a reopening plan I mean, from a public health standpoint and with all voices at that table, right? I mean, if we're going to have uh, some testing followed by contact tracing of various ways and we're going to allow people back into the state, right? How do you protect the employees that are servicing those visitors? Um, they have to have faith and trust that our system is taking care of our own. Um, as companies who, have, who are now practicing great uh, social distancing and teleworking, uh, bring people back into the workplace, you're not sitting next to somebody you haven't been sitting next to for several months. Can you feel confident that there are enough public health measures in place in case something happens that you're covered? Um, and that the practices are good. So it's not only about visitors, it's how we interact with each other. So that's gotta be the highest priority right now before we can open up our economy and people have trust, they have trust. Yeah, um, well, I think one of the, yeah. one, one of the worries that you've touched on, we, we, we really must discuss this before we close, and that is tourism. Um, tourism, the engine of our economy. Now, maybe after the transformation, it may not be quite the same way, maybe not conducted the same way or the same, you know, percentage of the total state uh, product. But for now, it, it's, it's, a, it's a key factor in, in recovery, I'm sure. And so the question is, how do you play off 
the need to you know bring people back to work get the hotels working get all the, the huge infrastructure of tourism happening again and at the same time prevent us from reinfection by tourists who are going to come this is a hard problem by tourists yep. who are going to come to these shores potentially yep. bringing virus with them how do you do yep. that well I, I listened to i think dr tim brown from new hero or uh and then dr bruce anderson and josh green i mean there was a dialogue um and, and one of the thoughts was that you know it was like you know remember when we had rabies control in hawaii um so you had to certify before you brought a dog in um or you or you put them in quarantine i liken it to that one of the thoughts was before somebody gets on a plane to come to hawaii they have to pass a certification that they're COVID free right at point of you know a day before or whatever uh, does that mean that they're COVID free maybe not but at least it's a high higher probability that they are and then you can rely on that in allowing them in and then you have contact tracing as they come in so these are the public health experts have to come up with those measures to, with some reasonable degree of uh, confidence is not going to be a hundred percent we don't have that much testing we don't have the laboratory we don't have the supplies uh you know we don't have the vaccine yet so in the interim there's going to be some measure of risk taking but you want to minimize the risk uh for the for the greater good so yeah. but it's not only tourists it's within the supermarket right are we going to be now going in two by twos six feet apart um you know now they all have the uh, plexiglass shields at the register that's a great practice what other kinds of things are we going to see coming out of this that becomes the new normal oh so many things uh, you could make lists of all the things all the relation the mind mind map of what you need right. to do all day I, i'm right. so i'm so happy that uh, you have been appointed to this alan i think it was a great appointment and i think you're the perfect guy for it um, I think it's uh, critical to the future of the state. And I want to I want to place ThinkTech at your disposal. It oh, would be thanks. great if we could cover what you do and help you be transparent. And we're here for you anytime you want to come on and talk about the status of any of these things, stabilization, recovery, resiliency. Uh, we're here for you. I, I want to be clear about that. Thank you so much, Jay. Thanks for all the good work ThinkTech does in any time. Thank you, Alan. Yeah. Alan Oshima. Uh, helping our state recover. Thank you so much. Aloha. Thank you.